Hey, I've been doing a series of videos on these fraction factorials using the gamma function and just want to go over five halves factorial. It does seem like kind of a strange thing. So we are used to the factorial as being positive integers and zero. And here we've got a fraction. But the gamma function allows us to extend the concept of the factorial to negative numbers and fractions and complex numbers. So let's look at that now. Okay, so from this first formula, you'll notice that we define the gamma function in terms of an integral. It's kind of nice having it as an integral because we might be able to solve the integral and find some different values that we don't didn't know we had. And then to start with five and a half factorial, I think this second formula is going to be particularly useful. So let's just notice, kind of working it backwards, that the gamma of seven halves, if we subtract one from seven halves, okay, we notice that this is the same thing as five half factorial. So what we're really looking for here is gamma of seven halves. I know it is kind of inconvenient that it's not lined up exactly. It'd be kind of nice if the input was the exact same as the factorial, but it's off by one. That makes it a little awkward. <laughs> but this is how it's defined, so we'll deal with it that way. So what we can do is we're looking for gamma of seven halves. We'll use our integral formula here. So we're looking for an integral from zero to infinity of x. Instead of t, I'm, instead of t I'm going to use x. So we're going to have x to the seven halves minus one. It's going to be five halves e to the minus x dx. Okay, and we just want to work on this integral. I'm going to do, I'm going to go right to the integration by parts using the di method, just because we have like two functions here. So we're going to do tabular integration. We'll have one column to differentiate, one column to integrate. I'm going to differentiate x to the 5 halves, and we'll integrate e to the negative x. Okay, we'll take a derivative here, and we're going to have 5 halves x to the three halves, just using power rule. We'll do it again and we're gonna have five halves times three halves. I'm just gonna leave it like that for now and not multiply it out. I don't know why, just because. And then we'll do it again. So we're gonna have five halves times three halves times one half x to the minus one half. Here we'll integrate. This is simple, but we're gonna have e to the minus x. We just have the minus sign we pull out. Then we're going to have e to the minus x because the minus cancels, and then we're going to have minus e minus x. Okay, so part of our solution is just going to be these diagonals, and then this last row is going to be an integral. So let me let me write all this out so we can just look at it. Okay, so let's start with this whole long thing on the left here. Now, we're evaluating this from 0 to infinity. All right, now let's see what happens when we plug infinity into this. So we have all, in every one of these terms, we have e to the minus x, which is the same thing as one over e to the x. Because the exponential is growing much faster than this x term, so at infinity, all this is going to zero, and we don't have to worry about that part. Now when we plug in zero here, uh, e to the zero is gonna be one, so like we just are evaluating at all these x terms. But all these x terms when we plug in zero are gonna be zero. So the fortunate thing is this whole thing is going to zero, and we don't have to worry about it. So now all we need to do is just deal with this piece and we're done. Let me just clean it up to get some more space. Okay, so at this point we've reduced this integral to 15 over eight. What are we gonna do with this integral though? The thing I wanna notice is let's go back to our gamma function and notice that this thing, we could express this in terms of the gamma function. If you just notice, if you looked at the gamma of one half, you plug a half in for that z, you have the exponent of minus one half. So this whole thing is actually just the gamma of one half, and so what we're trying to find then is 15 over eight times gamma of one half. And now this could kind of be a problem, right? Because really, how do we find gamma of one half? Well, we do out this integral. Now we could do that, but actually I just did that in a previous video in this playlist. So what I'll do, I'll provide a link in the description to how we solve this integral. It's actually not bad at all, but what we found in that other video was that this gamma of one half value is square root of pi. And I find it to be really useful with the gamma function or with factorials is actually just remember one value, have like one value handy, and then you can find all the other values from that so that you're not constantly computing these integrals. You can just use this and then get to this solution pretty quick. And then one thing I wanted to go over really quick was if you're given this problem, 5 half factorial or gamma of 7 halves, how would you go about finding that without doing any integrals? Well, I think a good way to do it, now you could remember a formula or you could remember the value. That's fine and that's a perfectly fine way to do it. Um, but what we can do is we can use this last formula, okay? We have gamma of n plus one. So our n plus one is seven halves. So we can look at our gamma of seven halves value as just reducing it by one as five halves 
times gamma of five halves. But then we can just use this repeatedly, like gamma of five halves could be written as three halves times gamma of three halves. So substituting that back in, we would have five halves times three halves times gamma three halves. But this could be written as one half gamma one half. So it's a good thing it wasn't. So this would be really repetitive if it was a bigger number. But the thing is, it really is just the same thing over and over again because it's a factorial. So substituting this back in, we have five halves times three halves times one half gamma one half. But this whole thing is actually 15 over eight. Gamma one half is the value from the other video, square root of pi. So we can actually get to this value pretty quick. So that's it, we'll stop it there. I'll provide a link in the description to the playlist, the other videos. And I also have a quiz called Gamma Function Quiz. Hope you check that out. We'll provide a link. Thanks everybody, have a good day.